Well, hello. Welcome to the God's Love Bank Facebook Live show. We certainly welcome you today on this fresh new year, fresh, clean, and unused. We have great blessings and great opportunities ahead of us in this new year. And I am thankful to God that he's allowed us to have the opportunity to continue to share the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, through the God's Love Bank program. And certainly we welcome all who chime in to this uh, weekly, actually by, by daily, every Tuesdays and Thursdays at one o'clock central time, uh, we have the God's Love Bank Facebook live broadcast. And we uh, value everybody who chime in to this broadcast, but we are encouraging people to chime in to the broadcast, not for the sake of just getting a point or coming along and getting encouragement. All that's good. We're serious about spiritual growth at the God's Love Bank program. And all the people who really have been touched by God's Love Bank will never be the same again. And interestingly enough, the God's Love Bank program is nothing more than the gospel of Jesus Christ, systematized and organized, made simple and easy so people can understand it in the privacy of their own home and so that they can teach others that they too are in fact God's love bank. So God's love bank is really about spiritual growth. That's what it's really all about. We're not playing any games. We're not playing the game of going to church saying that we are committed to Christ and yet we're not growing spiritually. We certainly don't wanna be like the people over in the third chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, there was a group of people who were natural, carnal, and then they were spiritual. So there lets us know there are three types of people, uh, especially when it comes to spiritual growth. They are carnal-minded Christians, and they may not be Christians. Then there is natural. Those are people who never have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you got carnal-minded Christians who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you got spiritual Christians. God's love bank is all about your spiritual growth. Uh, it's designed to help you to be able to grow spiritually so that you can be happy and so that you can enjoy the abundant life that Jesus promised us when he said, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. And so I want to start out by just saying it's a it's a brand new year with God's Love Bank. We start out with the core value of new self-honesty. And today we're going to be talking about the subject that we started talking about the other day, the five floors of your spiritual house, the five floors of your spiritual house. And I'm going to answer a question that I think was a superb question, actually. Uh, someone asked me, how do you get out of the basement of your spiritual house? I'm going to address that today. So let's be clear. God's Love Bank is a spiritual growth program designed to help you to grow spiritually out of your old self into your new self. True spiritual growth is growing out of your old self into your new self. It does not necessarily mean just because you say you're a Christian or just because you've been a Christian for a long time does not guarantee that you are spiritually mature. We must also understand numerical growth cannot sustain spiritual growth, but spiritual growth can sustain numerical growth. So the target for each individual is to grow up spiritually so they can experience what Scott Peck said in his book, I think it was the people of the line, or it could have been the, low rest, the, the road less traveled. Here's what he said. He says, the very avoidance of the painful process of confronting and dealing with your problems, your painful problems, only results in, 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 in a greater pain and ends in an inability to grow spiritually or to be happy. Here are the implications of his statement. Spiritual growth guarantees happiness. Happiness is fleeting, it's temporary, but joy is eternal. So as I pursue joy for the sake of being happy, I can 
grow spiritually. Now, I must grow spiritually or I won't be able to deal with the painful issues that I'm confronted with every day in my daily life. All of us have to deal with how do we handle the painful problems that we have to deal with in life. For example, look what happened in Congress. Look what happened in the Senate. Look what happened with our president. Look what happened with the whole notion of the White House and what's been going on for years. I would suggest to you, we got a lot of people, even in Congress, who have not grown up spiritually and they act like spiritual babies. And be, to be frank with you, nobody can question the fact that our president operates like a spiritual child, like a spiritual baby. He just got in position of power. And when you get in positions of power and you don't grow up spiritually, whether you are the president, whether you are a senator, whether you're the vice president, whether you're an elder, whether you're a deacon, whether you're a member of the body of Christ and you don't grow up spiritually, you will do negative, defeating, sabotaging, destructive things to yourself, all with a sincere intent to love yourself. Your old self-love will make you do those things because you are in the basement, if you will, of your spiritual house. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So let me begin by giving us a few things that I want to make everybody aware of. Number one, the calendars are, I've ordered another batch, I got them. They will be going out today and tomorrow. So those of you who have ordered them, you will be getting your calendars shortly. Many of you have already uh, received your calendars uh, and you will be able to appreciate what I'm about to talk about with these core values. So let me begin by going to the core values that uh, 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 of Jesus. Every, as you know, every month we talk about a new self-love core value. January 2021, ladies and gentlemen, the new self-love core value for January is new self-honesty. There's the children's value. I'm going to start with the children's value. Then I'll move to the youth value. Then I'll move to the adult value. Now, let me say something about these calendars. There is a concept called subliminal programming. Subliminal programming is when you keep seeing a thing, you say it to your soul, you sow it to your soul. When you sow it to your soul, you reap what you sow and you sow what you reap. So when you see me talking about these core values throughout this year, what you must understand is that you are being subliminally programmed consciously with these core values of the most successful human being who's ever lived. New self-honesty. I will be honest and truthful with God, myself, and other people in 2021. Then the youth uh, core value for new self-honesty is the honesty and truthfulness with the Holy Spirit in my single most important relationship with God, which affects all of the significant relationships in my life. See, your single most important relationship with God, if you break that relationship, it, it results in a broken relationship with every significant relationship in your life. So it's important to maintain the main thing, which is your single most important relationship with God. That's the youth value. Then here's the adult value. It says the honesty and truthfulness with the Holy Spirit in my single most important relationship with God, which affects my relationship with Jesus, my father, my mother, spouse, my children, my brothers and sisters, and in my own life also in that order. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 through 33, you can see the hierarchy of relationships that Jesus talks about. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, your soul have five departments. You have the department that has to deal with your wealth, then your health, your relationships, your career, and your salvation. Let me tell you which one is the most important. It is the relationships that you have that affects your health and your wealth and your career and your salvation. So the calendars have these core values. You will be getting those calendars. Those of you who want calendars and don't have them, you can go to my website, godslovebank.com, and you can get the calendars, but I have to distribute them five at a time you'll see packets of five. If you get the calendars before they run out, then ladies and gentlemen, they will be sent to you. And that is all covered in the information on my website. All right, 
So what we want to talk about today is the five stages of spiritual growth, which is really five stages of your spiritual house. And what you must understand in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul says, while we, uh, he, he says, we have this uh, 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 treasure in earthen vessels. No, I'm over in 2 Corinthians 4. Paul says, while we at home in this house, he's given us a new house, a new building, not made with hands. Verse six, we are at home in this body, but when we are absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. What are you saying? We have a spiritual house. You are a spiritual house and your spiritual house really has five floors. Now, let me tell you something else about the spiritual house. Your spiritual house coincides with your old self and new self love story. So we'll be talking about that. So let's start. Now I'm gonna cover what we're gonna cover all year long with the five stages of spiritual growth, with the five floors of your spiritual house. And then what we're gonna do is break them down one uh, floor at a time. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about this thing now that uh, we're talking about here, okay? When we talk about these five floors of your spiritual house, you start out in the basement. Now the basement is cold, it's dingy, it's dark, uh, it's wet. In the basement, you experience a number of things that you don't wanna continue to experience. In the basement, you are lost. In the basement, you're coming out of being lost. Second Peter chapter one and verse number four says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And then he tells us to add to our uh, faith a number of things, almost 12 different things. Then we find in Ephesians chapter four, verse 25, I'm gonna talk about what happens when you stay in the basement. Someone asked the question, how long do you stay in the basement of your spiritual growth? And then there are some who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then they go back and get caught up with the pollution of the world. When you are caught up in the pollution of the world and the corruption of the world, you in the basement of your spiritual growth and spiritual life. Now, I wanna stop here and just ask us some questions. Do you believe that Jesus taught in the parable between the unprofitable servant and the profitable servant? The profitable servants, the five talent servant and the two talent servant, they were profitable. Then there is the unprofitable servant, which was the one talent man. Now you remember what that passage, what that whole parable was all about. Do you know what it was all about? What are you trying to say? I'm trying to show you why you need to grow up out of your basement into the first, second, third, fourth, all the way up into the attic of your spiritual growth. What was that parable all about? Let me tell you, if you go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 29, Jesus said to him that have more will be given and he will have abundance. But to him that have not, even that he has shall be done away with. That parable is all about your spiritual growth into the abundant life that Jesus talks about. He says to him that have understanding, him who owns this, have understanding, him, he shall uh, have uh, abundance. And, and then to him who have not, even that he have shall be taken away. Do you believe what Jesus taught about abundant living? I'm talking about, he said, I came to give you life. That's a good life. And to give it to you more abundantly. That's eternal life. That's the abundant life. Do you believe that Christians can live the abundant life? Now, let me ask you another question. Do you believe that the Bible teaches that God desires and delights in the prosperity of the saints? The Bible teaches that. If you go over to Psalms chapter 35, verse number 27, it says, behold, the God delights, he takes pleasure in the prosperity of the saints. 
what are you trying to show? I'm trying to show us you got a reason to be growing up. There are some of us who've been living substandard lives because we don't believe that Jesus meant what he said. I'm going to give you life. I'm going to give it to you more abundantly. And if you look at the parable of the talents, the five talent man and the two talent man in Matthew chapter 25, verse number 20 through 23, the five talent man came and said, Lord, you gave me five. I have invested in the bank of my soul and I've prospered five more. The two talent man comes along and says the same thing. God turns to the two talent man and the five talent man. He says, well done, you good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Watch this now. He says, now I'm going to give you the authority. I'm going to give you the blessings. I'm going to make you rulers over cities. Look at that prosperity. That's the kind of gospel that we find in the Bible. Now, let me stop for a moment. I want to hasten to say, I know where I'm at. Sometimes uh, we talk about prosperity and many people are still stuck with old Reverend Ike way back there when he talking about put your hand on the radio or some of these scallywag preachers that come on and they're trying to get people's money. They call that what they call the prosperity gospel. Well, I want you to know I am not teaching the prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel has to, un you have to understand about prosperity. When you have prosperity, you have prosperity with your health, your wealth, your relationships, your career, and your salvation. It's not just limited to your wealth. So I'm not teaching a prosperity gospel, but I sure am not teaching a poverty gospel because Christ did not teach that. He said, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And then in Colossians chapter one and, and, and verse number 12, it says, giving thanks to God who have qualified us to receive an inheritance for the saints in the light. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And he's qualified us to receive an inheritance uh, from God for the saints who are operating in the light. What are you trying to show? I'm trying to show you why you need to grow up spiritually. And then the Bible says that over there in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 17, he's talking to those who are rich. He says, I, I, I encourage those who are rich to, to uh, 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 un enjoy, the, uh, 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 enjoy the riches of your, uh, or rather the uh, God desires, uh, let me get that right. That text is telling us over there, I'm gonna have to read that. I, I am not gonna butcher no text because that text is a powerful text. First Timothy chapter six and verse number 17, I'm gonna read that text for you because what it says is so powerful. Listen to what it says. I command those who are rich in this present age. It's nothing wrong with being rich. It's nothing wrong with having wealth. He said, I command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in, certain, in uncertain riches. Watch this now. But in the living God who gives us all things to richly enjoy. The word richly means to lavishly enjoy. God has given us the heavens and the earth. He's given us everything out here. He's blessed us with life, health, strength. He's blessed us with this world that we can richly enjoy. That's part of the Christian walk. And then, you know, the Bible says we have this treasure, the gospel treasure in earthen vessels. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse number 14. But then he says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, who the God of this world have blinded the minds of them who obeyed not the glorious gospel light of Jesus Christ. And then Old Testament talks about how that we can have good success. Joshua chapter one, verses seven through nine. So I, what I'm trying to show you is it is to your advantage to grow up spiritually, but there are many people who are stuck in the basement. So Peter says in second Peter chapter two and verse number 20, he says, for it would have been, it, it would have been uh, uh, better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to return back into the world. The latter end with them is worse than the beginning. He says, it's like a dog returning to his vomit. I'm talking about the basement of your spiritual growth. Now we'll be back there in, in just a moment. Then 
you got to understand there is the first floor of your spiritual growth. That's the infancy stage. That's when you begin to realize that you have old self. And during that stage, it's very important that you understand truthfulness and honesty. Second Peter chapter two, verse number one, we see the infancy stage. He says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Then he says over there, in, or, or the Bible says in James chapter one, verse number 18, of his own will begot he with the word of truth. So the emphasis stage of spiritual growth is when you begin to be truthful with yourself. You begin to be honest with yourself. You begin to love yourself like you really a uh, were designed to love yourself. And all of us need to understand most people, including myself, have to deal with old self-love and old self-love will make you feel worthless, abused, abandoned, or rejected. And we got to learn how to love ourselves, but we first got to own and realize our old self and our new self. That's the first floor. The second floor of your spiritual house is the childhood stage. That's the stage where you recognize your old self. See, before you own it, you can't recognize it when it shows up. So in 1 John chapter 2, verse 12, John is writing to the people about spiritual growth. And he says, I write unto you children because your sins have been forgiven you. The childhood stage of spiritual growth is all about understanding forgiveness and the ramifications of what happens when you don't forgive. There are many people whose spirit is closed because they got hurt or because uh, uh, they uh, experienced some pain. So they close their spirit to themselves. Sometimes they close their spirit to another person. When they do that, they close their spirit to God. When they close their spirit to another person and God, they close their spirit to themselves. And so they get stuck in the childhood stage of spiritual growth, and therefore you need healing. Now, people who are in the childhood stage of spiritual growth, here's how they operate. Paul said, when I was a child, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, I, 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 I spake as a child, but when I became an adult, I put away childish things. When you are in a childhood stage of spiritual growth, would you get stuck there? And there are many people in the church of Christ who are stuck in the infancy stage or the spiritual stage of spiritual growth. If you're stuck in the infancy stage, it's because you're not truthful with yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. And then if you're stuck in the childhood stage, you got to begin to forgive yourself of everything that's ever happened to you and then be accountable to God on how you will respond to what happens to you so that you can receive your healing. Then we move to the third floor in your spiritual house. That's the youth stage of spiritual growth. See, first you got to realize your old self. Then you got to recognize it when it shows up. Then when it shows up, you got to learn how to renounce it. You got to learn how to turn a withdrawal into a deposit. The youth stage of spiritual growth, John talked about this. He says, I write unto you young men because you've overcome the wicked one. See, see the young, the, the, the youth stage of spiritual growth is when you're experimenting, when you, when you are questioning things, when you think you are more mature than what you really are, but you are mature enough to overcome the wicked one if you surrender and depend on the Holy Spirit and trust God in that youth stage. You can renounce the, the old self. Then there is the fourth floor on this spiritual house, your spiritual house, called the adult stage of spiritual growth. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 11, Paul talks about how when he was a child, he spake as a child, he understood as a child, he reasoned as a child. In first John chapter two, John says, I write unto you fathers, because you have overcome the wicked one. When you are in the adult stage of spiritual growth, you are taking care of other people. You are helping other people to grow. You, in many cases, become the spiritual father or the spiritual mother of other people. I have so many spiritual sons that I don't even know how to count them. I don't, I'm not responsible for the spiritual sons. I just adjust to the ones that God uh, brings into my life and I just do what Brother Winston did with me. He was my spiritual father. 
he and I both knew he was my spiritual father and I knew that God put brother J.S. Winston in my life to help me to fulfill the purpose that I am fulfilling uh, at this point. And so, so uh, just one second. Hello, Dr. Gammon. I uh, I am uh, on 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 a Facebook Live a tele uh, television show right now. Can I call you back? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Or can you call me back? Thank you. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I had to take that 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 call because that's my doctor. I uh, uh so so you in the youth stage of spiritual growth that. That's when you are aware, you 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 are uh, you you are questioning things, but you're not mature enough to take care of yourself solely. You need adult stage of spiritual growth or spiritual father to help you to grow spiritually. And there are many preachers who are in the infancy stage, many elders in the infancy stage, childhood stage, youth stage, and you need to be at least in the adult stage if you're going to be ministering to other people because if you can't take care of yourself, if you are an infant, if you are a child, if you're an adult, you can't take care of yourself. You need someone else to help you to grow spiritually and help you to grow up. And that brings us to the fifth floor uh, in this spiritual house called the purpose stage. You remember when Jesus was about to ascend on high and he was going to the cross. He said, now my soul is troubled, but shall I turn back from this hour? He said, no, for this purpose I have come. When you are in purpose, all things work together for good for them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. But a lot of people have not grown spiritually enough to be mature enough to find out what their purpose is. So they're wandering generalities rather than single-minded specifics. They like a leaf blowing in the wind and they don't know where they're going. We have to learn how to grow out of the infancy stage, through the childhood stage, to the youth stage, through the adult stage to get to the purpose stage. Then we come to that point where we are in the attic, if you will, of our spiritual growth. Now, the attic of your spiritual growth is when you conform to the image of Christ in every area of your life you are now spiritually mature and you are, are, are conforming to the image of Christ. Now, I've said all this to say this, during this year, here is what we're gonna be covering in your spiritual growth, in your spiritual house. First of all, we're gonna start out with new self-honesty. You gotta hear the gospel. And the, the tool of thinking that goes with new self-honesty is the prayer macro strategy. Then we'll look at new self-courage. That's when you believe the gospel. And the amen principle is the sound doctrine, amen principle that goes along with that tool of thinking. Then we can look at in, 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 in uh, March, we'll be looking at new self-forgiveness. That's when you repent. And the tool of thinking that works with that is opening and closing spirits. What are you doing, Dr. Roach? I'm sharing with us what we will be covering throughout this whole year. And let me tell you something, this is a lot of information and I know it, but I wanna give you an overview of what we mean when we say, when you come to the God's Love Bank Facebook Live show, I'm expecting you. I have expectations for you to grow up. Look at Congress, look at the spiritual babies in Congress, look at the president. We got babies, spiritual babies running this country. We need more people to grow up spiritually in the church, and we got too many churches that are being controlled and led by men, and some cases women who are spiritually immature. So that's why Paul writes to the church at Corinth, and he says, I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, because you are yet carnal. So what we gotta begin to keep focusing on is spiritual growth. All right, let me continue. All right. When we get to the second floor, then you start dealing with a uh, new self power. That's when the person who never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ confessed. The tool of thinking with new self power is love, deposit, and withdrawals. Then you go to the fifth uh, 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 tool of thinking and the core value, which is new self purpose. And new self purpose is a reinstatement of you through baptism. So baptism is important. All right, the tool of thinking is God's purpose toolbox. Okay, I'm gonna move pretty fast here. Then there's new self-excellence. 
seven laws of sowing and reaping faith. Those of you who've been chiming in last year and working with the God's Love Bank program, you can see now what God has been doing with you and what I've been doing in this process. I talk this every year, but each year, each month is fresh, it's clean and unused. All right. Then we go to new self-discipline, purpose, instrumental goals. Then we go to new self-confidence, the five components of the gift journey. Then we go to new self-work, the God's Love Bank planner and, and journal. Then we go to new self-respect. The tool of thinking is the golden rule. Then we go to new self-intimacy. Intimacy, the tool of thinking is 100 percent a, a pyramid. It's a powerful concept. Then we go to new self-prosperity. The tool of thinking is the thermostat of your soul. Then we go to new self-integrity. It's the old self, new self profile. Those of you who have never done the old self, new self profile, I recommend that you go to godslovebank.com now and you can find out what your old self is in three minutes. And then in approximately the same amount of time, you can find out what your new self is. Now, when you understand that, you can come out of the basement and start growing spiritually through all five stages, all five floors of, of this spiritual house. And then finally, you come to the five stages of spiritual growth or the five floors of your spiritual house. And that's when you can experience new self happiness. And that's what this thing is really all about. Amen. Let me pause and let us look at this for a moment. Okay, now let's go further. So let's deal with the first floor. The first floor is emphasis stage of spiritual growth. That's when you begin to own your old self. Now, let's be honest. There are many of you who are watching this show right now, who's been on this program th last year. You did not know what your old self love was. You knew uh, that you had an old nature and, and you know what? You cannot fool mother nature. And you knew something was making you do negative defeating, sabotage and destructive things to yourself. But you did not know that it was your old self. So now you know, so you began to grow out of the basement into the first floor, which is the infancy stage of spiritual growth. And that's what we got through covering. Now at this stage, you gotta be honest. You gotta accept truth from whatever source it may come. You can't be getting mad at the preacher or getting mad at your husband or getting mad at your wife because you learned some things about yourself. You gotta deal with, your old self. But now I want us to go to this basement of old self. Okay. Here's what a person asked me the other day. How long do you stay in the basement? Well, let's talk about what's in the basement. In Ephesians chapter four, verse number 23 to 24, uh, it's interesting. Here's what we learn. You were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful lust, and to be made new in the spirit of your mind, the word attitude in the original language is spirit, in the spirit of your mind, and put on your new self, which is created in true righteousness and holiness. Now, here's what I want you to see. Once you do that, I'm talking about you come out and you out of the basement now, you, you, you're putting off your old self and you're putting on the new, let's see what's in the basement. <clears throat> Let's see what's in the basement. Now I'm going to read this and then we'll look at it. It says, therefore, each of you, this is after you own that you got an old self. This is after you realize you got an old self. <clears throat> he says, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. This is what's happening in the basement. For we are all members of the body of Christ. See, this is what he was saying. Now that you've obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, now that you've owned your old self, therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give place to the devil. Verse 28, anyone who's been stealing, you must stop stealing and steal no more, but work doing something useful with your hands that you will be able to share with those in need. What are you talking about? I'm talking about living in the new self now. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, 
You want to know how you're living in the new self? Here it is. But only that which is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that they may benefit from those who hear you. Then it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of us grieve the Holy Spirit because we don't trust him. We don't treat him like he is a person. Uh, then it says, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Then it says, get rid of bitterness. You can't be living with new self and you're bitter. Rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with any form of malice, and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as God through Christ forgave you. Okay, Dr. Rose, can you make this a little more practical? All right, let's look at this again. Okay, here's what we learn. Once we put off the old self, here's what we got to make sure we don't let happen. We got to get rid of falsehood. If you're going to love yourself, you got to begin to be truthful with yourself. How have you lo been loving yourself? How have you been taking care of yourself? If you can't be truthful to yourself, you can't be true to anyone. Shakespeare once said, this must follow as night follow day and you shall not be false to anyone. You have to be true to yourself. You have to love yourself. And you know what? You can't be having this shabby love. If it means you got to lose weight, you got to lose weight. If it means you need to love yourself better, take care of your body better. If it means doing whatever, you got to get rid of all falsehood if you're talking about growing spiritually uh, in your spiritual house. Here's the second thing we see. Now, I'm, I'm, these, these things were sequentially in order of what we just read. Ephesians chapter four, verse 25 through 32. He says, it's okay to get angry, but when you get angry, you cannot sin. We got too many people who are getting angry and they go off on people and then they got the nerve to say that they're living in their new self. We got some folk who are angry all of the time. That's your old self, and you have to put that off. He gives us the third thing. Don't give the devil a foothold. Foot Somebody says, well, what does that mean? You know you're living on the edge. You know what that means when, you, when you're out here doing things that you know you should not do, and it may not be the outlandish things. It may be selfishness. It may be you not growing up. It may be you acting like a child. It may be you being impatient with people at the stoplight and cussing people out. It may be whatever. You have to make sure you don't give the devil a foothold. What does that mean? When you put yourself in a position where you don't live in your new self, you give the devil a foothold. The fourth thing we find after you have come to a point where you are in, you're in the basement. I'm talking about how it is in the basement. When you're in the basement, these are some of the characteristics that are in the basement. If you have been stealing, steal no more. Now, a lot of us be stealing and and really, we do it in a lot of ways, cheating on your taxes, although you need to look for every tax break you can get, cheating and lying to another person. You get $20 too much at Walmart and you don't give it back. You keep away and say, you keep it in your pocket, say, they lost my game. When you dishonest, when it comes to your money, when you cheat somebody, you owe somebody and you, don't, you are stealing, it says those who steal, steal no more. Then it says, you must work doing something that's youthful with your hand. What are you talking about? I'm talking about getting out of the basement. Somebody asked the question, how long you stay in the basement? You stay in the basement as long as you are false, as long as you're not true, as long as you let anger control you and you sin. You're in the basement as long as you give the devil a foothold. You're in the basement as long as you are doing something that's inappropriate, that's wrong, that's stealing. There are a lot of people in Congress that are stealing, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old self. You must work and do something useful with your hand, its hands. And if not, you are in the basement. Then while you're in the basement, you got to share with those who are who are in need. Do you take some time, some money, some experience to bless other people? People in the basement don't. Okay. Now let's go further here. We've 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 already looked at this. Here's the seventh thing that lets you know you're in the basement. Do not let any host, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. We got too many people who say things to hurt people deliberately and unconsciously. We got some people who are so busy 
caught up with religiosity, churchology, rather than Christianity, that you are legalistic and you operate in everything you do and you over here trying to make it seem like you are spiritually mature, but you are really caught up with the church rather than your Christianity and not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You have to not talk negative. You got to stop cussing. Black people say cuss, white people say curse. I'd rather you cuss me out than to curse me out because cussing is just an ignorant way of cursing. Cursing is when you condemn another person, when you call the condemnation of God upon another person, when you say, God, D you, you are condemning them. But the only problem is when you do that, the same words that you use to condemn somebody else, it goes out into the world and come back down on you. The law of life and death is on your tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. When you speak death to another person, you speak death to your soul. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. When you do, you're in the basement. When you grieve the Holy Spirit because you won't learn about who he is, you, you get caught up being legalistic, you don't trust the Holy Spirit because you limited it to the word uh, uh, of God. And I say that the word helps us to know what the Holy Spirit is really all about, but the word, but the Holy Spirit is not limited to the word. He's bigger than the word. He's the one who inspired the writing of the word. So you got to use the word of God to get to know Jesus and get to know the Holy Spirit so you can have a wholesome, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when you don't know him, it's easy to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's when you know you're in the basement. When you're in the basement, you got to get rid of all bitterness. It blows my mind how many Christians claiming Christianity and you bitter. You still have not let somebody off the hook. You keep records of wrong. You bitter towards, if you are bitter toward any person, you in the basement. If you are enraged by any person, you in the basement. If you are angry all the time, you in the basement. If you are ready to fight and brawl all the time, you in the basement. When you are saying negative things about people that you should not say, slandering their character, you are in the basement. When you're in the basement, you got to get rid of every form of malice. Malice is when you do something deliberately to hurt another person and you plan to make it happen. You are getting caught up with all forms of malice. Then you got to be kind. I'm talking about to get out of the basement. You got to be kind and compassionate to one another. You got to put yourself in the shoes of another person when they are in pain so you can experience what they experience so you can be compassionate. And then the last thing we find that Paul talks about in this text that keeps people in the basement is you got to forgive each other. Just like Christ forgave you, which means there will be times you got to forgive some people. They don't even deserve it because you didn't deserve it. When Christ hung, bled, and died on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I got a person, I got a sister who, she just mad at me, angry at me. She struggles with me. I have done nothing to hurt her. And yet she's, she lashes out and, and says things to me and, and treats me a certain way. But you know what? You got to forgive like Christ forgave. You got to forgive a person when they don't even know what they're doing to you. Are y'all with me? Okay, now let's talk. Let's talk. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is a lot of people here. We're gonna just, there's Carolyn. She says, hello, everyone. There's Laura. She says, uh, hello, good afternoon, God's Love Bank family. There's John Winston. He says, looking forward to continuing to grow this year. And he says, thank you. There's Crystal who says, greetings. There's Kevin who says, hello. There's Lillian who says, good afternoon. There's Kathy uh, Binyard. She says, uh, good evening, uh, saints. I guess she's in a part of the world where it's evening time, but she says, good evening, saints. Crystal says, my Lord. Crystal says, my Lord, spiritual babies. Nate says, good afternoon. Uh, Francis says, good evening. Curtis says, Pittman says, good afternoon, everyone. Cora says, hello, everyone. Uh, 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 Sandra says, watching and, go, and go, go to be the glory. It's going to be the glory. God's going to get the glory. All right. 
Then there's Sandra, she says, God be the glory. She clarified it. Then Francis says, hello, everyone. And, and she quotes uh, uh, Psalms 25, uh, 25, 37. That's what it said. The Bible says God delights in the prosperity of the saints. Kathy says, amen. Crystal says, and I'm going to talk, taking some statements now. She says, thank you for teaching the proper context and distinction of life, good life, and more abundantly. I don't know about you, Crystal, but I think you, you know this. I, if Jesus said we can have life and have it more abundantly, I'm not settling for uh, this type of Christianity that we see happening where people are living from hand to mouth. People don't believe that they can live abundant. People don't believe that they can have prosperity in their life. The gospel of Jesus Christ gives us in eternal riches in heaven, but it also blesses us to live the abundant life on this side. And so, yes, I'm all about that. And I appreciate that comment, Crystal. All right, then Francis says, hello. And then Rika says, hello. Okay, here's a comment by, by Don Dawson. She says, thank you for emphasizing the prosperity gospel is not all about dollars, but has to do with the life we are living and the choices that we are making that leads to abundant life. Don, I'm just, I, I'm just going to, I am so impressed with you. I want to meet you. I want to meet you in person. We're going to be having a God's Love Bank conference, ladies and gentlemen, and it's going to be in September uh, of this year in person. I believe that God's going to bless us to a point where we can be free. We're going to meet in person. We're going to be having a God's Love Bank conference. We're going to be having a powerful time. We're going to be having people coming from all over the country and overseas. Look forward to that information. Don, I hope you are able to be there. Uh, because it's going to be a great blessing just to meet you. Then, okay, thank you for that comment. Then there's Kathy uh, Binyard. She says, amen. Christo says, teach, brother wrote, stay strong and stay true. Thank you, Christo. You, you, you like my uh, encourager. Awesome lesson. She says, thanks. Okay. All right, let me go down here. Wayne says, amen. Ken, Kenan Lejeur says, amen. Uh, Nicole Sellers says, amen. On lunch, so grateful to say hello. Great lesson. All right, Nicole. Now, let me say something to all of us. Whether you're on your lunch break, whether you're doing something, we are asking you to take time to chime in to the God's Love Bank Facebook live show but it's not just about having a good message or entertaining yourself. It's about spiritual growth. It's about growing. It's about meditating. It's about coming out of the basement, going through your first floor of spiritual growth, then to the second floor of, of, of spiritual growth, the childhood stage, then through the third floor on spiritual growth, which is the youth stage. Hopefully you move to the adult stage of spiritual growth and then the the uh, uh, purpose stage of spiritual growth. But ladies and gentlemen, you want to get in the, in the attic. The attic is where God says that we are to conform to the image of Christ. And listen, just because you claim in Christianity don't mean you're growing spiritually. You owe it to yourself to get the abundant life, the prosperity, the inheritance, to enjoy the riches that God has given us to lavishly enjoy, for us to delight in the prosperity that we get from God since we have this treasure in us who is earthen treasure. We can have good success and live like Christ says, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And so we expected everybody who chime into the show, let's be serious. This is not a game. And trust me, I don't do this just to be doing this. I take the time just for you to see this information. Let me tell you something. It takes hours to put together what I put together. And it's taken over 40 years to develop a lot of the material that we're talking about. Why? Because I'm interested in your spiritual growth. And we want everybody to focus on these things as we get ready to wrap things up. First of all, you have to own that you are God's love bank. See, I am God's love bank. My spirit, my soul, and my body function and operate as God's love bank. My spirit, my soul, and my body, Jesus taught this in the 25th chapter of the book, book of Matthew 14 through 30. Jesus taught this. Uh, Paul talked about the spirit, soul, and the body. I don't want to go back into all of that, but I'm saying you got to get to a point 
where you own that you are God's love bank. And when you teach that you are God's love bank, you got to own that you have new self-love. Now, you can't get new self-love until you own your old self-love. When you own your old self-love, you can begin putting off your old self-love, get out of the basement, go to the first, second, third, fourth, and go all the way to the atom, add it, and be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We we appreciate your presence. We hope something said in this message has encouraged you. Bye-bye.